Hey everyone, we're going to be setting up two control surfaces under Linux. This one over here on the left, that's the next touch one. It's using a thing called Mackie control. It means the buttons, they're already kind of mapped out on the device. Over here on the right, this is the next touch compact. It's using a thing called MIDI CC. What that means is we can map pretty much anything to anything. Faders to knobs, knobs to buttons. Basically, if you can click on it, you can map it. So let's get both of these set up on Linux. Since we're using Jack for this video, let's go with QJack CTL. Let's go ahead and head into the setup. Now you should be able to see your MIDI control surface in the interface dropdown menu, but you don't need to select it. Just make sure that you have the correct interface selected. I'm using a Scarlet Solo for this video, so that's one I have selected. Double check your sample rates, your frames, and your periods, and all that other fun stuff. But what we're really here for is over here on the right, the MIDI driver. You can select between sequential or raw. Now in my not so humble opinion, sequential, it has better timing. Some people might dispute that, but you know what? It's okay to be wrong on the internet. Let's go ahead and tap apply. We're gonna close the settings and hit start. We'll open the graph and see if everything's detected and set up correctly. We can see that Alsa has added the ports for X-Touch Compact and the X-Touch 1. Jack System MIDI, that's showing the X-Touch Compact and the X-Touch 1 as well. Nice. And of course, we have the audio interface MIDI along with the ins and outs. All right, in the Adore Preferences menu, we're going to select control surfaces. We have two options, Generic and Mackie. Let's start by configuring the X-Touch 1 using Mackie. Double click on Mackie, open Control Protocol Settings, select X-Touch 1 from the drop-down menu and select the X-Touch 1 for both the surface sends and receives. Hey, look at that, the X-Touch 1, it wakes right up. I should point out that you can map custom actions to the function keys on any Mackie device, but you know what? That's for you to play with. Up next is the X-Touch Compact. It's going to be using generic MIDI. Open the control protocol settings, and I'm going to select X-Touch Compact for incoming and outgoing MIDI. We can close that, and we can close our preferences window as well. We should be good to go. For the X-Touch 1, using Mackie Control, let's jump over to the edit window and have a look. The jog dial is clearly doing jog dial things, and we can switch between tracks using the channel button. We can use the fader to adjust volume levels on each track. Pressing record arms the record for the selected channel, and record, play, stop, transport controls, they all seem to be working. Another thing we can do is use the jog dial to zoom in and out of the timeline. And up top, we have our BPM slash timecode for the project. That's another thing built into the Mackie protocol. The timecode takes a minute to pop in and out door, but hey, you know what? It's still usable. Switching back to the mixer, you can see everything's working here as well. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but the scribble strip down there, that's uh, it's something that'll display the track name, volume levels, and all that. And I almost forgot the knob. Almost forgot the knob. It does, uh, it pans the lefts and the rights, all that fun stuff. Now let's take a look at the X-Touch Compact. Right now, kind of does nothing. Not even a little bit. It's genuinely a blank slate, and that's why I like it. We're going to remedy that by mapping some functions to it. It's really easy. Move your cursor over the item that you want to map. Hold down Control plus middle mouse click. Now press whatever you want it to be on the control surface. And you can see it's smart enough to move the controls on the Mackie device if something is mapped on both. Now let's map a mute button with Control plus middle mouse click. I'm going to do that pressing what I want to be the mute button. There we go. Again. You can see the control surface mirroring the buttons on the Mackie device as well. I'm going to go ahead and map the rest of the faders because I know someone is watching this video and thinking, hey, I can do all of this with a mouse. Well, can you do this? No, you can't. Pretty neat, huh? Now, for this video, I do have the faders mapped to fade, but I could just as easily map the faders to control, EQ, compression, you name it. And the same goes for all of the rotary encoders. But if you're not sold, maybe this will win you over. I've reset the control surfaces, and we're going to restart our door. Let's open that project again. Ta-da! That's recall. Everything pops up right where you left it, and that's extremely handy when you're bouncing between projects. Did I mention this guy here? It's got two layers to work with. Yeah, you really have like 18 faders and like double the knobs with the additional set of buttons. It's really, really handy. Oh boy, let's get into Reaper, because in Reaper we need to open the preference dialog and head to the device section under audio. Double check. The auto connect jack MIDI channel to hardware is selected. Back in the MIDI device section, you can see things are labeled about as gracefully as a rabbit emu on a meth binge. It's kind of a hot mess, but fortunately we don't have to tangle with it for Mackie control devices. We're going to scroll down to Control, OSC, and Web. From here, we're going to add a Mackie control universal. And now we play the guessing game. It's usually the first device, but since we have two plugged in plus the MIDI for the audio interface, let's uh, try the second. Let's give that a try for both input and output. I'm going to click OK, and hey, we got lucky. Look at that, the X-Touch 1 has come to life. 
We can close out of the preferences and play around. Like Odd Door, all of our basic functions will be mapped. Changing channels, controlling faders, etc. Arming, record, activate, mute, jog dials moving around in the timeline, transport controls are working. We can add markers, basically good to go out of the box. Unfortunately, MIDI CC or MIDI Learn and Reaper is so bad, you're going to need to install a third party plugin. Before we do that, we need to connect the X-Touch Compact. So let's head back to the preferences and select MIDI devices. Since we know the X-Touch 1 is on MIDI 2, the X-Touch Compact should be on MIDI 1. Let's right click and enable the input. And we're gonna do the same for system underscore MIDI playback 1. That doesn't get confusing at all, right? Now click apply and we can close the preferences menu. Welcome to Repack, the plugin you need to install to install a plugin. I can't make that up. Insert second breakfast joke here. Fortunately, this is extremely straightforward. Select your architecture, in my case, 64-bit x86. Head to your home directory, then enable show hidden files if you haven't already. Now we're going to head over to .config. And of course, Reaper, you gotta scream that because it's always in all caps. Then user plugins, and just give that a save. Now we need to get the bits in order to install Relearn. Fortunately, this is wicked simple. All we have to do is copy a repository URL. Let's highlight that and give it a copy. Let's open Reaper up again and look at that. We have a new tab called Extensions. And under that, Repack, so we know it's working. Select Import Repositories and we're going to paste that Relearn URL that we just copied and go ahead and click OK. Now back to Repack and Browse Packages. Just do a search for Relearn. There it is. Right click to bring up the version menu and make sure you select 212 since for whatever reason, 213 plus is the menus kind of garbled in Linux. Click apply, click okay, third time's a charm and give Reaper a restart. Since Relearn's a plugin, you can drop it anywhere on any track. I like to put it on the master buzz. Let's just go ahead and give that a click and search for Relearn. Make sure you select all plugins so it's going to show up. There it is. Just click add. From the menu, we need to select our control input and feedback output. That's going to be MIDI Capture 1 in the case of the X-Touch Compact. Now we can get to mapping. Let's go ahead and click add one button and learn source. Now I'm going to touch the first fader on the control surface. Now click learn target and move the first fader in Reaper using the mouse. And if I move the Mackie device back to a first, hey, there it is. It will mirror the movement like a door. Now let's add a mute button. Click add and learn the source. Press the button you want. Learn target and press the button in Reaper. And we got a small problem. It only mutes when being pressed when I hold it down. Now to fix that, it's not too bad. We're gonna click edit and we're gonna change the mode from normal to toggle button. Click okay. Close the moon glyph window. You can just ignore that. Now, when you press mute, it'll stay muted until I press it again. Nice. But that's not all. Say we want to toggle a plugin on and off. Click add, learn source, learn target, and select the plugin. Now when I press this button, the plugin will either activate or deactivate. But like the mute button, we'll need to change the mode from normal to toggle. Now it's activating and deactivating like a boss. And no, you don't need the GUI open for it to work. And like with a door, you can map pretty much anything to anything. You could have the faders controlling the EQ, rotary knobs controlling the volume, etc. So yeah, that's how you set up MIDI control services using Jack on Linux. I want you to let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, like and subscribe. Then if you enjoy these no BS guides, you can support future videos directly by becoming a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Like all of these lovely miscreants flying by on the screen. Get special bonus content, access to our Discord, and more. But most importantly, get out there. Make something awesome.